In the last video on the Green Ghost, we talked about dealing with the body damage and whether or not it was too severe to warrant repairing the car. Well, the verdict is still out on that. If you recall, I said I'm going to have to do a little patching, get a fender on there so that I can actually drive this car and really check it over in an alignment shop before I decide whether or not I want to repair it. And then lastly, we went after the engine. You remember I said there were three things, rust, body and structural damage, and engine. Those were the three key areas I was going to look at before I made the decision to repair this car or not. So we went after the engine. We opened it up, and sure enough, it really looks good inside. Uh, the chain, that's one of the things you can always check. Just start pulling on the chain, see how much chain slack there is. This thing had absolutely no chain slack. I mean, it was really a tight chain. And then we checked the cam lobes. This is one thing I always look at on these old diesels that can give you a real indication of mileage or lack of maintenance, primarily lack of oil changes. But this cam had absolutely no evidence. I'm talking zero evidence of scoring. Even as I took and rubbed the fingernail across the top of the lobe, you're not feeling anything. So the cam checked out beautifully. But when we went to do the valve adjustment, all the intake valves were tight, almost at zero. We couldn't even get a one or two thousandths feeler gauge in it. So I'm beginning to wonder whether this thing has ever had a valve adjustment. We looked at the valve cover gasket and had actually had the original Mercedes part number on the front of the valve cover gasket. So that's not to say the gasket's never been changed, but let me tell you, it looks like this engine has never been opened up because that's kind of indicative of what happens when people don't do these valve adjustments on these diesel engines. The, the intake valves get real tight and they'll get to the point where they actually hold the valve off the seat and then you'll uh, have low compression and hard starting. And that's why I always do a valve adjustment before we do a compression test. Then we put the compression test on it and went through all five of the cylinders. <laughs> Now, I would expect an engine with 120,000 miles that had been properly maintained should be showing in the neighborhood 380 to maybe, you know, 400 pounds on each cylinder. But this one came in at, you know, 340. I had, think I had one at 345, one at 330. You can see here, they're not jumping up real quick. <laughs> But I want to say something here. Think about the car. Think about the history of the car. I'm not ready to give up on it yet, okay? This is okay compression. You know, if you have compression under 300, maybe 290, then you're getting down to a, a problem where the, the engine may be <laughs> approaching the end of its life. But you can run these old diesels a couple hundred thousand miles on 330 or 340 pounds compression. It's just an indicator that, well, is this engine really as good as I had hoped it to be? But remember now, this car has sat since 2007. So that's almost nine years that the car has not been driven. It's just been maybe started up once or twice. So it could be that this car needs a good Italian tune-up. By that I mean you need to get out, get new oil in it, get it tuned up and drive it 70, 80 miles an hour under load for about two hours. That's a good Italian tune-up on an old Mercedes diesel. And then come back and redo the compression test. I have a hunch that we might find an increase in compression if we really give this thing some exercise. You know, when these engines sit around for a long time, they don't get started. You know, the rings tend to get gummed up. In some cases, you can even get a little light surface rust on the cylinder walls, which is a real problem. But sometimes you can kind of wake them up and drive them hard like that. So we're going to try that. And that's another reason why I'm going to have to get a fender and a headlight in as, as quick and as easily as I can do that to make this car road legal. And then I'm going to get it out. I'm going to take it in, like I said in the previous video, and I'm going to get a front end alignment check, a rear alignment check. And if that checks out OK, we're going to take this baby on a road trip and run it really hard and then we'll come back and recheck that compression before I make my final decision. Now, some of you are gonna say, well, Kent, when's that gonna happen? And I'm sure some of you might be saying, well, Kent, when's the next video coming out? Well, I gotta get the parts. I don't know if I've got a fender. I know I've got a good hood. I think I've got a headlight. 
but I'm going to have to get a fender and that may take a while. So it may be a few weeks, it may be a month before the next part in this series is going to come on uh, online. So just be patient, okay? We're gonna try to find some parts. We're gonna try to get this thing ready to go on the road. And when that happens, we'll come back and we'll take the Green Ghost on a road trip. Let's see how this thing will perform. Here is another good sign that the engine is healthy. I have no idea how long this filter has been installed in this engine, but I don't think it's been a short time because the amount of dirt in here. You know, there's quite a bit of junk and, and needles and dirt down in there. So this has been in the engine for a while, but notice it has no dark oil spots. That's a real good sign. You got a little dirt right there. That's probably right where the intake came in on the air filter housing. But look at how nice that looks. Other than it being really dirty and filthy, see? You can see what I mean by this has probably been in the car for a while because <laughs> the amount of junk coming out of there. But there's no sign of oil. That gives me another good indication that I don't have a lot of excessive blow-by or crankcase pressure that's forcing oil up into the air filter housing. 